All right, so picking up where we left off, um, if you had solved this, maybe you knew this before I did, tan, um, inverse tan of negative root three is going to be negative 60. And so if we want to figure out where this is, like realistically, we'd have to think about where it is on the graph. So the graph of this would be positive one, negative root three, positive one, negative root three would be over one and then down root three. So it'd be somewhere in the fourth quadrant. So we want the negative 60 degree angle in that fourth quadrant. So if you want to write it in terms of degrees instead of angles, it would be 300 instead of uh, five pi over three. So either way is fine with me. All right, let's do the next one. If you are feeling crazy, pause it and try it on your own. Um, if not, let's do it together. So first thing we have to do is find R, which is um, A squared plus B squared under that radical. So negative three squared plus negative four squared. R equals nine plus 16. That is the same thing as radical 25, which is five. Oh, nice, another easy number. Now I'm going to do tangent to find my theta. Theta equals inverse tangent of b over a, so negative four over negative three. I'm gonna throw that in my calculator, inverse, make sure you're in degree, I didn't say that before, but if you were haven't done your calculator stuff since last week, you might be in radians. Inverse tangent of four divided by three is 53.1, so theta equals 53.1. You can make that radians if it floats your boat, if not, I'm gonna keep it as degrees. Um, so I've got my theta and I've got my r, so now we're just gonna write our complex number. Z in this case is equal to five times cosine of 53.1 plus I sine of 53.1. I ran out of space. Ooh, there we go, squeeze it in. All right, so that's it. R and theta like we've done before. All right, the next thing that we're gonna learn is product and quotient of a complex number. So we're gonna talk about multiplying and dividing. And then we've got DeMoff's theorem and then we're done. So product and quotient. That's not how you spell quotient. Switch. So the reason we're talking about this now is that it's pretty simple to do come the product and uh, quotient of complex numbers when they're in polar form. Um, so that's why we're putting it in this form. So the product is essentially the product of the moduli or the modulus, the magnitudes, the Rs. So you're doing the product of R and you're going to then add the arguments, that's the word I talked about earlier, that just means you're adding the thetas. If we're doing the product of these numbers, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Quotient is instead of doing the product of the Rs, you're doing the quotient of the Rs, you're dividing the Rs. And then instead of adding the thetas or adding the arguments, we're minusing them, we're subtracting them. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you what those formulas look like. It's going to look a little bit complicated, but at the end of the day, you're multiplying r's and adding the thetas or dividing the r's, subtracting the thetas. So product is going to be if you have one complex number times another complex number, that is equal to the R is being multiplied together, R1 times R2, parentheses, cosine of theta one plus theta two, plus, don't forget about your I and your sine, theta one plus theta two. Okay, now we're gonna do the quotient. Think about what the words are saying to you. So product, multiply, add, quotient, divide, subtract. Z1 over Z2 divided by. That's the same thing as R1 divided by R2 times 
cosine minusing the theta is theta one minus theta two plus I sine theta one minus theta two. I lost parentheses back here. Okay, now this looks like a lot. Sometimes you'll see something written that says this, C I S theta one plus or minus theta two. That means cosine of theta one plus or minus theta two and then plus I sine of the same thing. So this is kind of a shortcut. So if you don't wanna write all of it, you can write um, C I S instead for cosine plus I sine of the two angles. Okay, let's do an example. Do room over here, we're gonna make room. Okay, so we're gonna do an example. We're gonna find the product and the quotient for these two numbers. So Z1 is equal to 25 radical two times cosine of negative pi over four plus I sine of pi over four. And then Z2 is going to be 14 times cosine of pi over three plus I sine pi over three. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is recognize what my R and um, theta in both of these are. So the first one, R is your number up front, it's at 25 root two. Is that all the space I have? Okay. R is 25 root two. And then theta is gonna be what? Let me write it a little smaller. I didn't realize I had no space. Theta is that, um, oop, I didn't mean to lose that negative. I know you guys are all yelling at the computer through me, or through the computer at me, but my bad. Um, theta equals that negative pi over four, or if you wanna convert that to degrees, what would that be? The negative 45 degree angle in the fourth quadrant, which is 3 fifteenths. So you can use that instead. Um, and the other one, my r in this case is 14, and then my thetas are pi over 3. And we know pi over 3 is the same thing as 60 degrees. Oops, stop. So you can use either, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, doing the... Um, the degrees might make it easier when we have to add and subtract. So we're gonna do product first. So product is Z1 times Z2. So we multiply the R's, add the thetas. Multiply R's, so 25 root two times 14 times cosine of the thetas added together. And I'm gonna do that before I plug into my calculator. So 315 plus 60, you know that that's gonna be bigger than 360. So what we can do is we just wanna find like the normal angle that's between zero and 360. So find its coterminal angle minus off 360. I had 375 minus off 360, I get 15 degrees, that's cool. Plus um, I sine 15 degrees. Again, it was 375 and I made it an angle that we're used to, so I made it 15 degrees. Okay, the only other thing I'm gonna do is just multiply 25 root two and four, 14. Um, we're gonna leave it in the most simplified form. You can also plug it into your calculator and go from there, but this is as good as we're gonna get today. So I'm gonna do 25 root two times 14, which is 350 root two, and then that's times cosine of 15 plus I sine of 15. So that's it for my product, okay? Now we're gonna do our quotient, which means we're dividing. So I'm gonna do Z1 divided by Z2, divide the R's minus the thetas, 25 root two over 14 minus the thetas. I'm gonna do 315 minus 60, because that's the order they came in, right? I have to do the one on top divided by the one on bottom, not just the bigger one over the smaller one, it just happened to work this way. 315 minus 
60 is 255. So I'm going to do cosine of 255 plus I sine of 255. And you can leave it like this. Again, you can put it in your calculator and to find your A term, you do this times that and then plus I, so it would be your B term, this times that. I'll give you, I don't have them on my paper, so I'm not going to give it to you. This is the best answer and I'd rather you leave it as these two. Okay, so these are good. This is right for the product. This is right, right for the quotient. Okay. Um, we're going to keep going. The only other thing we're going to learn is DeMauve's theorem, so I'm just going to give that to you. Um, if we had more time or if we were in class or we had normal days, lots of ifs, we would prove this, but there's no reason to. So this is called DeMauve's theorem. I'm guessing some mathematician named DeMauve a long time ago decided to make this up. We use this when we're finding the, um, when we're raising this complex number to, an, um, to a power. So we're doing a power of a complex number right now. Um, so it goes something like this. We say, let z equal r times cosine of theta plus i sine theta. So that's just a general form of a complex number and let n be a positive integer, so we're only raising to positive numbers. Positive whole numbers. Oop. Then, z raised to that power is the same thing as raising the entire thing to that power, or r to the nth, times cosine of n theta plus i sine n theta. So if I'm raising it to a power, so let's say I'm taking the complex number to the second, third, seventh, 20th, I don't care. We're gonna do r to that power and then we're gonna do cosine of n times theta and then sine of n times theta as well. That's it. So let's do an example or two if we have time. So it would say something like solve or use the Moivre theorem, but I'm going to just say a plus or one plus i root three to the third. Okay, so we have to do a couple things here. We have to put this in our comp in our trigonometric form, and then we can do it raised to the third power. So we have to remember we have to go back and do r and theta first. So r is the same thing as a squared plus b squared, one squared plus root three squared. Ooh, lucky us, we've done this already. We know it's gonna be root four, we know it's gonna be two. If you need to see more of the workout, scroll up. Now I'm gonna do theta, so I'm gonna do theta equals inverse tangent of, this time it's positive root three over one, so theta is gonna be positive pi over three or 60 degrees, okay? So now that we've found r and theta, now we're gonna plug it into our complex number in my trigonometric form. So z equals two times cosine 60 plus i sine 60. Remember, we've done this already. You just plug your thetas in, you just plug your r's in. Now I'm going to raise it to the third power. So the only thing that changes I raise it to the third power, so I raise r to the third power, and I do three times 60, and I do three times 60, and I do cosine of that, and i sine of that. So z equals two to the third is eight. Three times 60 is going to be 180, so I'm gonna do cosine of 180 plus i sine of 180, and we actually know what cosine and sine of 180 are. Z equals eight times one plus I times zero. Cross out Z just equals eight. I know this was a little abrupt at the end, but if you have any questions, let me know. If not, um, see you later. Oh gosh, where'd it go? I know it's still recording. <laughs>